All right, welcome back, parasites. So today's topic is factoring slash solving for x part one. So first thing we're going to talk about product sum. That's the one that it's like the basic way to factor. And then we're going to go ahead and solve for x as well. So first thing, just to factor the product sum, there's a reason why it's product. It's because it's something dealing with multiplication. And then sum, well, obviously we're adding something as well. So the way that we're thinking about is two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5. So multiply to 6 and add to 5. All right, so in this case, two numbers that multiply to 6, 3 and 2, and they also happen to add to 5. So those look like they're the answers for my factors. Now, because you have two x's, so I'm going to have an x here and an x here. And then one of them was a 3, a positive 3, and a positive 2. So this is factored. So this is just factoring. All right. Now, when it comes to actually solving for x, we're going to set each of these equal to 0. So now this is actually solving for x. Right, so solving for x, minus 3, minus 3, x equals negative 3, minus 2, minus 2, x equals negative 2. These are my roots, or zeros, or x-intercepts. So we did talk about these way before. Now you could do this. However, normally, once you get the habit of this, I kind of just look at this and I just say, I just have to flip the sign. Same thing here. I just have to flip the sign. So those are my roots, and that's just my factoring. All right, the next one, I don't know if this is the actual name of it, but I like to call it slip and slide. So this factoring method works when you have a number that's bigger than 1 in front of that x squared. So in this case, it was pretty easy because... There was just a 1 in front, and that's when the product sum works, because you have a 1, technically an imaginary 1, right there in front of the x squared. Now in this one, not so much, because now you have a 2 in front. So the slip and slide method that I call it, basically your first step is to multiply the coefficient of the x squared times your constant that's at the very end. So normally, when you have any quadratic, this is the standard form. So you have a, b, and c. Coefficient, coefficient, constant. All right, so in this case, in this strategy, we're going to multiply a times c, which would be the coefficient times your constant. Then I'm going to be left with x squared minus 5x if I multiply them, 2 times 12, I get negative 24, because that was a negative. And then you get rid of the 2. That's my first step. My second step is I'm going to actually use product sum from here. Because you should be able to now do it since it looks exactly like this, just different numbers. All right? And also you could actually find a number or two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 5. So for me, I mean, I kind of just start thinking, I start listing out the terms. So for a negative 24, two numbers that multiply to 24, well, 6 and 4, I do need a negative. So negative 6 times 4 gives me the 24, but it's not really going to get me that negative 5 that adds to it. Another one is 8 and 3. That one looks like it actually worked out. Negative 8 times a 3 will give me the negative 24. And negative 8 plus a 3 will give me a negative 5. So that one looks like it'll work. So I have x minus 8 and x plus 3. All right. Now, remember how at the very beginning we multiplied that 2 times that 12? Well, because I kind of took it away at the beginning, I have to bring it back. So my third step is to return the coefficient 
a, which is the first coefficient here, in front of every x. All right, so if I do that, then I'm going to put a 2 in front of that x and a 2 in front of the other x. Fourth step, we're going to simplify. So in this case, we can simplify this portion because 2 goes into 2 and 8. So if I divide everything by 2, I'm going to be left with x minus 4. This one I really can't simplify it because there's no two numbers that go into 2 and 3, so I'm just going to leave it like that. All right, and this is factored. So if I tell you factor the following, you stop right there. Now if I tell you actually solve for it, I'm actually going to take each of these, set it equal to 0, so plus 4 plus 4. So x equals 4 is one of my roots. And the next one, minus 3, minus 3, 2x equals negative 3, divided by 2, divided by 2. And my other root is x equals negative 3 over 2. Whoops, sorry. All right, so there we go. We have both roots. And lastly, the quadratic formula one. So I'm actually not going to do this one because I know that you guys have been doing it a lot in physics. So what I want you to do is actually copy this one down. Now, you should know the answers because obviously we did them in the product sum. So you should know that your answer should come out to negative 3 and negative 2. But I want you to actually show me the process if I were to use the quadratic formula, which can be used in any case at any point in time if I'm stuck and I don't know what to do. This one is very helpful. You don't have to remember it. It does come in your reference table. All right, so do this one with the quadratic formula, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.